Here we have the information that we built in the previous stages of this exercise. What we are now going to do is to use the CPI, the CSI, the SPI to calculate the expected value at completion. And when you remember from the previous presentations, we looked at those different elements. We had different formulas. The estimate at completion, the mathematical estimate at completion, is in fact when we assume that we will continue the project as it was planned. So from that moment on, we just suppose that the remaining value of the deliverables the deliverables that we have to create is in fact equal to the actual cost. That's what we called before the optimistic estimate. The second one is the estimate at completion taking into account the CPI. It means that we are going to assume that the remaining value that we have to create or that we will create is done at the same efficiency as before. So we're using the CPI as the efficiency factor and we have the actual cost plus the remaining work to be completed is the budget at completion minus the already created value divided by the CPI. And the last one is the estimate at completion with the CSI where we will have the actual cost plus the back minus the earned value, but here we will divide by the CSI and we will see how those values evolve and what we can do with them over the project. We will continue with this exercise later on. Let's look at the mathematical estimate. So we have 10 uh, already done. So what we are going to continue is that we have an actual cost of 15. We already created 10 widgets or the value for, 10, uh, for one widget, which is 10K. So 15 plus the remaining is then 105. The same we do for all the formulas. So we have the actual cost 25 and we still have to do 90. So we have 115 here. The next one is the 35 plus 90 is 125. And we continue like this. So we have again 115. Then we have the 55 plus we still have to do 60 is also 115. And the last one what we have is we estimate we will arrive at 105. So our optimistic estimate is rather good. There are not so many differences. We see that we went up a little bit and then we improved again. So let's see what happens when we work with the CPI. So now we have to divide the remaining part by 0 0.67 in the first period and we find an estimate at completion of 150. Now you can calculate these. I will just give you the results, but you can verify them with your own calculation. Here we have 250, then we have 350. So it's not looking so well here because that value, the CPI is very low. It's logical that the estimate at completion with the CPI calculation is of course rather bad. And then we improve again 150, we have 138 and 110. Now there is another story with the CSI because here we multiply the SPI with the CPI. Now for the first one that's not a problem because our SPI is 1, so we have the same value. So in this case our pessimistic value is equal to the probable value. Now from here on it goes a little bit worse. Here we find a value of 475, then 980, which is a little bit catastrophic. You can imagine that we are in some kind of panic here because those values are increasing. Now we will see in the following steps it's getting better. So 185, 158 
and 121. So basically what we see here is that there was a problem at a certain moment. The project manager resolved the problem and we see what's happening here. Now when we are looking at this table, we also have to take into account what decision will we make. Eh? In this case here it looks very bad, but it seems in this project that the project manager and the team evaluated that they could continue, that they found a reason why something was going wrong, and we see in the results that they are doing better. So this is basically uh, a good scenario. There was a problem, they resolved the problem, and then they continued with the project. Once we know the estimates at completion, based on the values that we calculated before, based on the information that we have from the project team, and of course based on the S-curve or the PV-curve, we can calculate the estimates at completion, the mathematical estimate. Remember, the mathematical estimate is when we are continuing the project, when we are spending the money as planned. This basically means that we have a CPI of 1 which is in fact quite a positive approach, an optimistic approach. We call it also the optimistic estimate. When we look at the estimate at completion using the CPI, we have what we would call the most probable value. And we see also, depending on the CPI, that the estimate at completion is increasing right, at the beginning. And then we are getting let's say, back on track, it means that we are adjusting our spending. We did something positive here. For the estimate of completion with the CSI, this is what we would call the pessimistic estimate. And of course, the CSI is the product of the CPI and the SPI. When those are below one, it will have an important effect on the calculations and we have all of this in a graph and we see first of all the estimate at completion the mathematical estimate and what we calculate at every time interval so we see the different numbers going up a little bit coming down again so it seems that we are getting closer to our goal we are coming closer to the original estimate because this difference is getting less. With the green curve we see the CPI based estimate and we see that in period 3 we go up to an estimate of 350k which is 3.5 times more than what we expected. We've seen in the previous presentations that there was already something that happened. If we put this information back into the business case we have to see is this still acceptable? What happens if we continue working like this? And it is clear if we continue working like this, we better would stop the project. In this project, the team decided to continue, which means that they found a reason why something went wrong and these things can happen. And we already saw that in the evolution of the earned value, that basically, the delay was compensated. We're almost back on track. And we also saw that the actual cost is coming closer to the earned value. So we're improving our schedule performance and cost performance. Of course, in period three, this leads to, uh, and two and three basically, leads to very dramatic numbers. Eh? We see the CSI based estimate going to 475k, it's almost five times, and in period three, almost 10 times the original value. But later we see, thanks to the effort, that the parameters come back together again. This is a good evolution because we see that our actions, what we have done with the project, has helped us to bring us back close to the schedule and the budget. These are elements we have to consider when we are working with the project. When we take measures, how are these things reflecting in our schedule and cost performance 
what's happening with the estimate at completion. And that's one of the most important parameters that we have to know is what is our expected end budget of the project. Very interesting to see with earned value management. It gives you a lot of insight of what's going on in the project. It tells you what you can do. Uh, it also tells you that when you take actions that there is improvement. And there is no magic when you improve something. It may take a few periods to settle in. And there is the power of the project management and the team that they have to evaluate this. They have to evaluate what is happening and they have to say, okay, we're going into the good direction. We see there is improvement, but if they would not see improvement, there it could be a reason to stop the project, to kill the project and use the remaining budget to invest in a different project that has more chance to be successful. Things can always go wrong. There may be a reason why it goes wrong and we have to investigate, but we have to see, can we improve it? Do our measure, me measures work or not? And in this case, in this example, the measures the team took worked. Earned value management is very interesting. It gives you a lot of insight in your project. And today, more and more companies are using earned value management. When you understand earned value management, you are in fact in a very good position because people will know that you know what you're talking about, that you understand earned value management. And it's very important to give a clear view to the project sponsor so that everybody can take the best decisions. That was for this part. We have still a lot of other things to do about earned value management and I'm looking forward to seeing you there. Thank you and bye-bye.